the key. The key yeah. is exactly what that. Can you go back to that slide real quickly of, of what the, the guy in Tripoli, the ambassador from Absolutely. the Barbary Absolutely. Pirates. We can he, read it again. You want to read it again? Yeah. Let, let's look at that. Absolutely. And you don't have to bring the audio up. Just bring that. I want to. He says, it was written in the Quran that all nations which had not acknowledged Muhammad were sinners, whom it was the right and duty of Muslims to plunder and enslave. Yes. Look at 47.4. So when you meet in battle, who? Those who disbelieve. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what so he's when saying. You meet the, the, infidel. The, the nations who have not acknowledged Muhammad, that's, uh, who are sinners. That's yes. the infidel. That's, yes, who those, that's 47.4. Mm -hmm. Then smite their necks until you have overcome them. Until you have made a great slaughter among them. Uh, a great slaughter among them. Make them slaves or prisoners, and then you can ran they can be ransomed. That's exactly what that passage says. Absolutely. Uh, that's exactly. Absolutely. And, and you say in the Arabic it has the word slaughter there. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Until yeah. you have made a great slaughter among them. Yeah. That's what the word said in Arabic. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue with, with uh, President Thomas Jefferson because I really want to get ahead. this piece out. President yeah. Thomas Jefferson resisted appeasement because he said it only encouraged further piracy. The first Jefferson decided to learn more about our enemies, so he chose to read the best textbook about all things Muslim. And he re read the Quran. Remember the first three presidents, well, Jefferson was our fourth president. Yes. The first three presidents appeased them. Absolutely. They gave him money. A lot you know, of money. Do you know how much the money they were given? They were given almost a million dollars, and the income of the United States at this time were seven, or seven to eight million. One seventh of the money of the United States has been given to the people, the Muslims, to the, Muslims. the terrorists in North Africa. So the first war in America's history was with the Muslim terrorists who Absolutely. attacked American vessels. Absolutely. Here it is coming up, brother. Uh, if you watch, yeah. look at the picture, brother and sister, watch me yeah. here. Here's a picture. This is talking about this first war. In 1805, U.S. Marines landed on the shores of Tripoli destroying the pirates headquarters at Derna, Libya. The new United States Navy reduced the proud pirate capital to ruins and set them back nearly a thousand years. A thousand years. A thousand years behind. We move now from the 18th century to the 700th century. We put them back to the days of Muhammad. Um, Talking about uh, the powerful, powerful North Africa, the best of the country, the, the militant men who literally were threat to the European, they were threat to the American, they were stealing uh, our ships, they were, we were giving them money, giving them money, and Thomas Jefferson said, enough is enough. <coughs> he went in the first war, the first time the Navy is used international. You know the song? Because we was, never had a navy before. You know, you know the song they sing in America about the navy from from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Where is Tripoli? You know what's amazing, brother? Yeah. When I ask American people where is Tripoli, they have no idea. <laughs> well, I mean, I talk, I did the seminar in, in few churches, and that, literally I ask people, do you know where is the Tripoli? It must be Mexico. Uh, somewhere in. Uh, Tripoli is the capital of Libya. It's yeah. the capital of Libya, and that's what exactly Gaddafi. happened at this thing. Absolutely. <laughs> that victory led to a peace treaty that lasted for almost 200 years until September 11, 2001, when mm. international Muslim terrorists killed nearly 3,000 Americans. Jefferson's mm. decision to fight was initiated by his studying of Islam's holiest book, the Quran. That is the end of the story. Yeah. Uh, it, it is sad yeah. that we were in power all this year and Muslims were demolished and we, they were put back a thousand years to literally Muhammad days and the internet, I love how it's written, it is international Muslim terrorist attack. It is. It is international and they attack us on September 11 and they kill 3,000 of us and from this day until today we are doing the opposite of what we should be doing. Absolutely. We are appeasing the Muslim people. Uh, our President Bush danced with the Saudi king, King Fat, <laughs> and our President uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama is bowing down Bowing. to his brother, King Abdul Aziz, and Lord have mercy. And now we're giving more money to Pakistan. More, we're giving money to Taliban. Yeah. $15,000 yeah. for every truck they are allowed to go through the land. Uh, have we learned anything from history of the of the past? No, we have not. Yeah, uh, yeah it's I, terrible. Remember that that thing we did Wednesday night with Reagan, mm -hmm. talking about appeasement. Sure. Appeasement is only going to lead us into slavery. Absolutely. Very interesting. Our topic: slavery. It's, it, it is there. It's for in the us to pay them, 
it, back then, it was literally a ransom to free the slaves. Now, our payment and appeasement to them is so they will not make us their slaves. And, and it is jizya. Muslim, yeah. uh, America do not understand. You are paying money to, not to, to make friendship with the Muslim, not to help them because they are poor, not to help them because they have need and from your heart, generosity, you make them, you know, a better life. No. They look at it, it is money you owe to them that you may continue your life, not for a long time, because when they have the upper hand, they will force you to the final word of Allah 9-5. They're going to kill you, your children, or they're going to make you slave, or you become Muslim. I want to end with what Go happened ahead. with Thomas Jefferson, if yeah, we look together on do. the screen. Yeah. Uh, if we don't mind, here is Thomas Jefferson. Uh, here is uh, Keith Ellison yeah. and uh, the beautiful Nancy Pelosi. Goodbye, Nancy. Goodbye. It's, it's good to say goodbye <laughs> to her. Trend. And listen what we have here. Keith Ellison is a Muslim representing the 5th District of Minnesota. He has been described as a visionary like oh, yeah. Jefferson, who believed that wisdom could be gleaned from many sources. Yeah, you, we, we, can have, we can have wisdom in the Quran. House yeah. Speaker Nancy Pelosi administers the House Oath of Representative Keith Ellison on Capitol Hill in early 2007. His wife holds Thomas Jefferson's Quran, which was provided by the Library of Congress. Yeah, yeah. A visionary like Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson studied the Quran in order to better understand our enemies, not to become a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to stop here. And I, that's I, I, tomorrow that's we're going to get into God's that, God. and yes. you're going to provide the verses. Absolutely. Every uh, verse, and, every and hadith. hadith. Yeah. Uh, we, we do not make up uh, smoke here. No. We, we have uh, documents, we have facts, we have story. Uh, to, to, to be told tomorrow, uh, it's set. Don't miss it's the set. show tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Osama yes. Duck Duke, Pastor Joseph, and Brother Emery Moss, pastor, uh, black American pastor who will be with us. Very important. Islam and slavery. Uh, Brother Osama, we have just a little bit of time. I'm going to let you summarize. <laughs> uh, I can't summarize well, that. But you know what? Uh, Here's the thing. Yes. People who are watching who may not have saw the first show, may not see the next show. Sure. What do people, what, what's the point? Well, why do we even do this? Why are we okay. exposing this? There, there is a loss of deception outside, Brother Joseph, my dear uh, uh, audience, our friends who are watching us. There is a lot of lies. There's a loss of deception. Sadly, because we don't know the fact, Muslims are taking advantage of our ignorance, even for the history. Uh, as we talk about our first uh, program, that the Bible does not teach slavery, but it's the uh, opposite. It's true. If you own a slave, if you try to sell a slave, if you take a person against his will to sell, the punishment in God's word in the Old Testament is death. In the New Testament, is burning in hell forever. Eternal punishment, eternal separation from God. It is sin. And uh, there are so many verses in the Bible. I wish we have more time to get into this in depth. We need to understand the true understanding and the true interpretation to the Bible by the Christian and the Jew scholars to understand the historical facts and the background of this verse around this verse. So we cover this as best as we can in our first program. In this program tonight, we talk about historically. Uh, I know a lot of writing, uh, a lot of movies has been made about slavery in America, slavery in the West, but we're talking about only 5% of the slave who came to America, of the 10 uh, uh, percent who came, or uh, the 11 million, 12 million who came from Africa, who were sold in 300 years. And we're talking about 300 years. And hardly anything is written. Hardly anything is, uh, we don't have one movie about slavery in the Middle East. Slavery as it is written in Islam, the Quran and the Hadith. And we're talking about the 1400 years. History is written and we, we have to tell it. We have to uh, learn a lesson from it. That Islam teaches slavery. The Quran teaches slavery. It has been practiced, has been shown in 1400 years. It still exists today. Today, some Sudanese family, some Christian from some part around the world has been sold as slave to uh, the Muslim world. And we need to know that. Uh, a, a lots of people uh, are, are been lied to. Uh, lots of people have not, does not know the truth. And uh, I, I pray that if you come late to watch this program, please go back in, in our website and watch it again. It, it's going to always be there for you to watch and watch it with some friends. Tomorrow, by God's will, we're going to be talking about what the Quran teach, what the Hadith teach. So it will not be my word. You some know nothing. I'm going to open the Quran. I'm going to open you the Hadith. What Muhammad says, how the Quran talk about slavery. There are plenty, plenty well, of the verses.
Absolutely. We got 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Thank you, Osama. Thank you, dear viewers. Remember, Jesus came that you might know the truth, Amen. and the truth would set you free. Whom mm -hmm. the Son sets free is free indeed. Muhammad had slaves and wants to enslave you. Good night. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here.